thank you very much for turning back in. My name is Fonny. In my channel, I talk about my houseplant and my Hoyas. Today, my voice is not uh, the most optimal. Uh, I'm still recovering from COVID and I hope that my voice will come back soon. Um, however, today I have one really exciting product that I want to share with you. And it is a request from one of the subscribers, the Lucia7. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, it is Lechuza Pom. Just trying my best to carry my bag. This one over here. So for this product, I want to give you my review and my experience in the past mm, nine to 12 months. Um, it will be a pretty long video and I will also put timestamp on different topics I want to mention. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out next time when I posted a new one. Before I start, I want to tell you how I know about the Choose Upon. Around nine months ago, I have obtained my Vichia palm, which is the largest palm tree that I have ever owned. You will see it in the video later on, showing different types of plant that I use the Choose Upon. So one day I saw so many tiny little gnats clawing upwards uh, on the trunk of my Vichia palm. It was so disgusting because I saw at least hundreds of tiny little flies, not so big because it's still baby, clawing. It's like so many. And I was like, how can I solve this problem? I really don't want my plant to have this problem. And then I went to the garden center and then this really kind lady told me about Lechuzapon. She say that all of her plant is uh, slowly transferring to Lechuzapon. And then I got to know about Lechuzapon. So the number one benefit, in my opinion, from Lechuzapon is you will 99% reduce the problem of Gannett. Not saying that it will eliminate, because there will still have some, but it's so much more significantly reduced. All right, let's dig in. Today is going to be a pretty long video because I want to share a number of areas that I have uh, been searching for when I wanted to start my journey with Le Chuse Upon. So it will breaking down into different parts. First is the fundamentals. Uh, what is Le Chuse Upon? The second part is how to use Le Chuse Upon. And then the third part would be the pros and cons of Lechuse Upon, uh, in my opinion, after nine to 12 months of experience. Okay, let's start with the first part. Um, what is Lechuse Upon? There are four ingredients, lava rocks, zeolite, pumice, and fertilizer. Before digging into the functionality of the four different types, let's think of what plant really want in a soil substrate. Most of the plant uh, will like to be constantly moist in the soil substrate. I know this could be a bit controversial because a lot of people will say that before you water your plant, you should wait until it is bone dry. Especially for Hoyas, you should stress them a little bit so then they can flower. However, in my own experience, I realized that keeping the uh, soil substrate bone dry before you water it again, increase significantly the root rot uh, probability. This is because root needs to have moisture to keep it alive. When you don't have enough moisture for a prolonged period of time, the root eventually died off. And when you water a uh, same number of uh, amount of water while the root has died, it will rot itself because it's no longer uh, functional in order to absorb water. So in my opinion, I think all of my plants enjoy constantly moist substrate. Um, another thing that plants really enjoy is to keep their root healthy. And how to keep the root healthy is to allow root to grow. How the root grow in a faster pace or in a more healthier pace is they need uh, enough space in between so then they can stretch themselves. Another part is root also need oxygen, which means that it needs air 
in between a soil substrate. So aeration is a very key important part in a soil substrate. And of course, you need a nutrient in the soil substrate. So then you can provide um, additional food uh, and ingredient for the plant to grow. Because you have to remember the main food uh, for plants are not fertilizer. You can't just give the plant fertilizer without giving it light because the main food source is from photosynthesis which means that you need to give the plant enough light and in addition just like ourselves we have a supplement we have vitamins to keep our uh, body healthier so to summarize why lechuza pond is very good in my opinion for plant it is because lechuza pond provide all of the essentials that i just explained for a plant to grow healthily both the plant itself and also the root so we can start breaking down what are the functions of each ingredient lava rocks lava rocks are very airy component that actually have a lot of pores and holes in between the little rocks. So then it allows more air to get into the soil substrate. Secondly, zeolite. Zeolite has the functionality to absorb um, the toxins within the water. That's why we sometimes will find zeolite in uh, water curation. That's the function of the zeolite, is to absorb the toxins within the root or within the water that you provide to the uh, plant itself. And thirdly is pumice. This is an item that I have been using even before knowing Lechuza Pond because pumice has the ability to absorb just amount moist in the little rock. It won't expand, it won't uh, do anything in the little rock, but it actually has the ability to absorb moisture uh, inside this rock. So this is also the reason why Lechuza Pond is uh, possible to wick up water. Uh, from a water reservoir. It is because the pumice can absorb water um, and then store it in the little rock and just release enough and a good ratio of water moisture within the soil substrate. And lastly, the fertilizer is the extra vitamin that you provide to the uh, plant. But this is also another thing that related to the cons that I will explain later on. Um, so now you know about Lechuza Pond. What is Lechuza Pond and why, uh, functionality wise, it makes sense to be a good substrate for plant. Then we move on to the second part is what kind of plant I have experienced um, to use the choose upon. Before I dig into uh, transferring all of my plant to the choose upon, I did a lot of research, but I wasn't able to find a wide range of the variety of plant that claimed to be good to be transferred to the choose upon. So this is a first hand experience I would like to share with you because I cover a wide range uh, of plant that potentially one of the plants that you have. I will walk you through um, what I have in Lechuza Pond. I'm not showing all of the plant I have in my home because I have quite a number of them, but I covered all of the uh, genre of um, plants I have in my home. So then it could possibly give you an uh, insight whether you wanted to try. Uh, essentially, I have it uh, in Hoya. All of my Hoya uh, I use Lechuza Pond. Uh, philodendron, all of my philodendron, all of my monstera, uh, all of my syngonium palm trees, including Laquala grandis, uh, Vichia palm, and ferns as well, and uh, Strelitzia nicolai, uh, my jasmine, and asparagus fern, and also tiger fern. So it covers a wide range uh, of variety, and uh, yeah, let's go and check it out. So I'm going to show you right now. All of my Hoyas, I am using Lechuza Pond, and all of them are thriving so much. Um, and as you can see here, um, this one is a clear pot that you can see. Um, it's a full pot of Lechuza Pond, and all of them are thriving very much. Um, move on to another type, uh, Monstera Thai Constellation. 
I have reported this one to Le Choose Upon around a month after I have received it in the mail. And ever since, I have three for New Leaf. Um, there's one coming up over there. Uh, another Monstera I have is also in Le Choose Upon. As you can see, this one is the Monstera Elbow. I have transferred in pond since I got it as a cutting. And another type is Philodendron. You see this one, it's Philodendron Golden Sundadu. I did not expect Golden Sundadu to be this large because it's supposed to be a smaller sized one, but I'm not sure if it's because of Le Choose Upon, but I'm pretty sure it contributed a bit as well because this is a very large leaf compared to normal Sindadu. And um, this is the size that it comes in. And you can see I have potted all of it in pure Le Choose Upon. And another one, another type would be Syngonium. Um, Syngonium is really prolific uh, when they grow no matter really to be honest no matter what you put in they grow really well but i think when i put in the choose upon it just acclimated really quickly and there's no signs of slower growing or no signs of um, resistance when i moved to the choose upon so these are example um i have the mojito this one is the confetti and behind i have three king three kings um so you can see it's all the choose upon and then i have this huge elbow um this is one of the first uh syngonium variegated i have you see this is a super long vine it just grows quick so you see i also have it in the choose upon in the lechuza pot um and then here another one is the uh, pink splash it's also in the choose upon this one is Guilania. Um, it's also in Le Chusa Pond. And another type, which could be a bit uh, different from what you know, um, I have my huge palm, Vichia palm. I potted it in Le Chusa Pond as well. Um, it's an unusual one. I took a risk because this is a very expensive plant because it is huge huge um it's like two and a half meters tall and i remember that was one time i saw so many gnat crawling on this huge chunk and i was like oh i need to fix this it's so gross because it's right next to my sofa i really don't want any um Disgust, disgusting and that's get into my guest's mouth or eyes or whatever and then i potted it in full pond it's a really expensive investment because this i think it's like almost 16 uh, liter uh, with this whole pot um, but um, i've potted it for more than half a year now and it's still it's still surviving so i will take it as all right then we move on to another large plant that i have used the choose upon um, i have uh covered this one in my winter growth uh, episode however it has oh my god even more um growth now it's like three new leaf coming and i actually just uh, reported it um, maybe a month ago and it hasn't i mean reported it in pong and it hasn't really uh hinder any of the growth rate because this is the newest uh leaf coming and it's growing so fast it is growing probably a couple of centimeters each day so i think um this uh strelitzia nicolai is also pretty happy with uh, the choose upon another special one i haven't really seen anybody doing it but i have tried it i took a risk as well this one is the jasmine 
plant. Um, later on, uh, when it become a bit warmer and more light, it will have uh, white little flowers. I have potted it in lechuza pond. You probably can't see because I have a bunch of sphagnum moss uh, on top. This plant really needs so much humidity, or I would say so much moist uh, in the soil substrate. So I just popped in a lot of uh, sphagnum moss but uh, ever since i potted it in lechuza pond it has been growing really well um you can't really see let me try it's all the way up like there um my goal is to have it grown like a living frame now that we are back uh, after the little tour of my Lechuza Pond excursion, um, then I will move on to the third part, how to use Lechuza Pond. Now, this is one of the biggest topic I try to research on, uh, on internet. I want to explain certain questions that I have in mind nine months ago uh, when I started Lechuza Pond and I haven't found it online answering this question. So. Hopefully this is something uh, helpful for you. So the first area is transition from soil to a choose upon. A lot of people will say that online. Um, it is very essential for you to remove as many soil as possible when you transfer your plant originally from soil to a choose upon. Um, based on my experience, I think it's not 100% of soil you need to remove. Um, I think as long as you remove uh, as good as you can, even you have some soil sticked in the root, it is still fine. The most important thing that you need to understand is why. Why do we need to remove all of the soil as much as possible? before you transfer to the choose upon. After I explain you this theory and understanding, you will find the answer by yourself and you can judge, hopefully, by yourself, when is enough. So we need to think about how does the choose upon work? As I have explained in the element of the choose upon, we know there are pumice, Pumice is an ingredient that allow to absorb just enough water in a little rock and slowly release to the roots. The important part is you need to have enough a life root to touch these moisted up pumice. If you have a huge bulk of soil, that all of the roots are so um, tightly stacked uh, within this uh, soil bowl, none of the root can actually touch these pumice. When the root can't touch the pumice, that means the root itself can't receive enough water. Now, obviously, your root can always grow outwards and then can touch these kind of pumice. But in order to reduce the stress of the plant, what you really want to achieve is at least um, you should remove the soil as much as the tip of the roots or all of the alive roots are freely movable and able to touch the pumice and also all of the lechuza pond, I would say. Um, so this is a very important concept for you to determine when is enough. Do you really need to rip off all of the roots that has soil on it? No, you shouldn't. I tried uh, because I really don't know at the time when I did it by myself. I, I really did really harsh on the root. But the, the downside is it takes a much longer time for your plant to acclimate um, because the roots are kind of hurted and uh, disturbed. It needs to regrow itself. And also in addition to regrowing, it also needs to adapt to a completely new type of soil substrate so I would say remove as much soil uh, on the tip and also allow at least uh, most of the life root to touch the existing new uh, substrate then you should be good to go then we move on to the second part how to water 
the choose upon. There are two areas that I can mention. First is using the choose upon as a normal soil substrate. Second is to use a water reservoir while using the choose upon. And when can we do that? So let me answer the first question, how to water your the choose upon when you use it as a normal soil substrate. Just water as normal, just water as is, this is a uh, soil to you. The good thing about the choose upon is it's very unlikely that you'll overwater your plant because it's not like um, soil that has a spongy kind of ability that will block up or hold up a lot of water in a soil bulk. Um, it is very airy, so straight in, straight out. It only take enough water that it needs and then it will straight go flush out. So there is one thing that I have encountered uh, or I was not sure um, whether I have done it right. So the choose upon here, you see that it's very small, tiny rocks. What happened is for the choose upon, my first um, question while I was using it is, did it actually absorb enough water? Because at the time when I water it, the water just goes straight through. It almost like it never really absorb any water. So what you should be aware of doing is slowly drizzle the water instead of using a, a, like a water bottle, like pouring right on top. But use a smaller opening water bottle to slowly drizzle the uh, plant. So then you make sure that the lechuze upon actually has absorbed water in the pumice. So I would say water every five to seven days, just like a normal watering schedule that you will have. So that's the first part. Now then we move on the second part, which is the one thing, or one of the many that I really like about the choose upon is you can use a water reservoir. However, Using a water reservoir takes around three to four months for the plant to develop water roots. Not until water roots are developed, you should treat it as a normal soil substrate, which means that you should not just fill up the water reservoir and don't pour water from the top because that only means that you never water your plant. I can show you what that means. Um, so um, I have... Well, okay, let's use this one as a, I have this one as an example that I put behind me. So this one here is my Hoya Hushkaliana variegated. I have just repotted it in pond, but uh, I think it's around like two, three weeks ago, but it's thriving so much now. Um, obviously it's because it's spring and also pond is such a great substrate, so there's no reason for it to not like it, right? <laughs> okay, so if you look at this one, this is just uh, lechuza upon, and there's no uh, there's no water roots, which means that I have added a wick. So then, in case it, uh, in case I forgot, or in case it doesn't have enough water in the soil substrate, it can still get water from the water reservoir. However, in this scenario, you should not uh, just fill up this water reservoir you should fill up um, from the top. So then all of the water can actually run through the soil substrate before going to the uh, water reservoir. Um, otherwise, you will end up having really dried uh, plant as if you have not watered it. And I have another example that I can show <laughs> that I actually prepared. So I have this one. So this one is uh, my Philodendron Parisio Verde. This is a one leaf cutting, maybe eight, or maybe actually actually just half a year ago. Um, this one is the only leaf. And then I have used the choose upon to pot it in. And actually I also propagate this one uh, directly in the choose upon. So this one, uh, eight month it managed to develop water roots so you ready to see the water roots what means by water roots yes it's a, it's a lot of very white healthy delicious uh, roots okay so as you can tell over there 
water roots are roots that goes into the water reservoir that it will suck up water directly to the plant which means that when there are water roots already grown into the reservoir you don't really need to water from the top you can directly fill up the water reservoir and then the plant will just suck up as many as it needs so it is a really, really good way for you to prepare yourself for summer vacation. Because if you have a friend helping you to take care of your plants, then you only need them to fill up the um, water reservoir until the maximum point. So you don't have to educate them how to assess whether the plant is um, is dry or not because it's so simple you just need to fill up the water reservoir that's it so yeah that's the part of how to water and then we move on to preparation of using lechuza pond so lechuza pond some people say that you should wash it someone say even you need to boil it in my experience i will rinse it um, and how i do it I think I have it here, just prepared. Like this one, I have a colander and then I use the, I pour the lechuza pon in the colander and then I just sift it out, the little um, sand. Um, you have to be extra, 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 extra careful. What I did, I was super stupid. I rinse it under the sink. My sink got super, super, super blocked. And I don't know how to fix it now. I, I just need to fix it. Um, but it's so avoidable if I'm not stupidly sky high. I could just uh, sift it with uh, like uh, in this colander and then use this bucket underneath to uh, capture all of the little sand. So my uh, tip to you is when you want to rinse it, you use a bucket underneath. Do not... Uh, uh, rinse it on your sink because you probably will have a lot of sand condense in your pipe and you have to fix it probably costs a lot of money so hopefully it's not a lot for me i just need to fix it by myself hopefully uh yeah the preparation is really simple some people will even say you don't need to do anything just use it directly um i want to wash it because i see there are kind of some dirt uh in the surface of the little rocks and if i wash it now i don't have to worry about washing it many 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 times because once you potted it it's really difficult um to kind of wash it then we're moving on the fourth part um can palm be used as a propagation medium? Yes, I have shown you uh, my Parisio Verde. It was a uh, stem cutting. Uh, I potted directly in the chooser pond, and I think within two weeks, I can already see roots coming out uh, from the stem. So it's a really good medium uh, for, uh, for the dendron. I also used it to propagate all of my um, Hoyas. All of them has been really good. The only problem is when the pot is too big. When the pot is too big and then you have too much uh, pond, it could be over moist. You can check out my root rot video that I have showed you. That's what happened to me. Pond is great, however, when you have a relatively big container, the pond never really evaporated. It's always super damp. Then it will have the possibility of rotting your uh, cutting. But if it is an established plant, I have not experienced uh, root rot because of uh, the chooser pond. Last part of how to use pond is, can it be reused? Yes, this is another great benefit of you to save up your money because all of the lechuza pond that I have used, I always reuse it. And how do you reuse it is I, this time, will boil it. Um, after I have potted in one plant and then I sell that plant or I combine that plant with another cutting, I will boil all of the lechuza pond um probably five to ten minutes um it doesn't really matter how long because these are all rocks except 
the fertilizer. I believe if you boil the fertilizer, it will be useless afterwards. So you will just need to fertilize your plant every time when you water it. I will go through this in later part uh, when I talk about pros and cons. Um, so that's a great point because you can reuse it forever. Then we move on to the last section is the pros and cons of the, the choose upon. Let's start off with the benefit. Why I highly recommend the choose upon. First, as I mentioned in my story, you can 99% guarantee no Gannett. Of course, I'm not talking about 100% because Gannett will still be around anyways when you bring in a plant and then it has a little bit of moist on the top. It still exists, but it's not so bad. Maybe you will see two or three from now and then. And I have to share my experience with you. I have more than, I don't know how many. I never really count uh, because I just enjoy plants, uh, but maybe a hundred plant. I don't know. I haven't really counted. I just see two or three Gannett uh, around me, uh, maybe 10 max. Uh, so Gannett problem will be significantly reduced. A little bit of theory behind it is because um, lechuzapon is an, an organic soil substrate. There is no fungus inside the soil substrate, which means that there's no reason for Gannett to lay their eggs and eat the, the fungus in the soil substrate because there's no there's no food there. Why would they be there? And another thing is the chusapon is very airy. Most of the time, um, the the chusapon will only be moist um, in the top. Uh, in you can you probably can't see, but I will try. If you see uh, this example, you can't really see that is that moist. Uh, in the top layer. It will be more moist on the lower layer because this, I have a wick there and then you can see water droplets. But I would say the top two inches often is dry. So based on that reason, they can't really lay eggs anyway. So it's a double no uh, for Gannett. So that's the biggest uh, benefit in my opinion. And then the second part is Reduction of the possibility of overwatering. I'm not saying that you won't, as I have shown you um, in my root rot um, video. I also used um, the choose upon, but uh, I used it in an incorrect way. But most of the time, because of the little rocks are very airy, it has so much space in between the little rocks, it will never really overwater because it's straight in, straight out. That means it will significantly reduce the possibility of overwatering. It also means that if you are a heavy waterer and you like watering your plants, it's all right. Now, I'm not saying that I water it every single day, but if it's like every three, four days, yeah, maybe. I would recommend myself uh, at least uh, sev every seven days. Moving on to the growth rate. This is another huge pro in my experience of using Lechuza Pond. I have Philodendron grows faster, Monstera grows faster, and particular Hoyas, you can see a significant uh, speed of growth uh, comparatively. I have an example that I have here. Here, you see two Hoya serpents. Um, this Hoya serpent, I made it in the same order last year in July. Both of them are on the same size uh, when I received it. However, this one here, it goes really kind of wrinkly. It starts getting wrinkly. And then I was like, maybe I should take a chance and then transfer it to a choose upon. So can you guess, which I actually already told you the answer, which one has been growing in the choose upon in the past uh, months? This one. It has grown significantly more than the one over here. You can see that there are so many tendrils growing up uh, words, growing upwards, and then you can also see a lot of peduncles all around the place. This one is not bad. 
uh, it's just not as quick uh, when it comes to the growing speed. This one has been transferred uh, to Le Chuse Pond uh, two weeks ago. Um, I waited for the whole time uh, until spring kicks back in. Uh, but this one is still growing uh, in an all right, decent um, uh, speed. As you can see, there are uh, growth point all uh, on different tips. And there's also multiple dunkles everywhere. Um, but this one is in a very chunky soil mix before, a very good mix uh, in uh, from the nursery. This one is just, this one is just taken off. Then we'll move on to the last thing I want to mention about the pros is the nature of the choose upon. It's relatively heavier, which means that um, it is easy to uh, stabilize the plant. Um, it is also granular uh, size, which means it's easy to go through the gaps. If you want to insert a moss pole or you want to kind of um, have a more stabilized plant, it should be easier than using the uh, Leca. Okay. <clears throat> Then we move on to the cons. I can't really think of too many, uh, to be honest, but I'm thought of two. Uh, first is fertilizing. As I have explained, the fourth element of the choose upon is fertilizer. However, it is a slow releasing fertilizer that it uh, marketed as only lasts for six months. Um, however, if you want to reuse the choose upon, you boil it, these uh, fertilizer will not be functioning anymore, which means that fertilizing has to be done every time when you water. Uh, I know that a lot of people aren't very comfortable to fertilize during uh, winter season, but it really depends on the soil substrate. Because uh, soil has fertilized inside originally, even in winter time, it also have that fertilizer within. But because the choose upon is um, an organic substrate, it won't have any uh, organic uh, materials inside. There's no fertilizer. So what you can do is to reduce probably half um, or even more uh, of the amount of fertilizer that you include in the water. So you have to fertilize your um, the choose upon uh, each time when you water it. Uh, I did it um, throughout the whole year and the past nine months. No problem, no burnt, no nothing uh, from my experience. But just read through um, the uh, instruction um, and also make sure that the um, fertilizer that you're using are for hydroponic uh, or semi-hydroponic so then it could be absorbed or could be used in a water reservoir situation um, if that will be helpful so and then another part that i can think of that could be a disadvantage is the transition because uh soil uh, is very different from the choose upon. Uh, soil, normally you will have a dry out period, which means that the soil will have a point when it is much drier than the time when you just uh, watered it. Uh, however, it's really different from the choose upon because the choose upon, it wanted the soil substrate to be constantly moist. The nature of the two is very different. So your plant could potentially experience a bit of shock when you transferred it and also you kind of need to interrupt the roots quite a bit in order to at least get uh, rid of the soil on the tip of the uh, root itself or most of the of the of the soil you need to remove so that's another uh, downside however i think it's totally worth it if you put in the time and do this during spring which is now i would say around like uh, april march time you should have a good amount of time for the plant to acclimate yeah so i have finished uh, my the Choose Upon 101 explanation and experience sharing with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a very long video and my camera actually switched off a couple of times because I ran out of battery. No, memory. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any additional question you want to ask me, please leave your comment down below and then we can discuss there. And if you are interested in this type of content and you don't want to miss out next time when I posted a new video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, 
until next time, I wish everyone is having a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye!